So now we're going to learn about font family, the CSS font family property. And uh, the font family property uh, is going to allow you to set specific names, specific names, and also generic names. And so you could set a variety of settings, and you set them in the order that you want the browser to try to access them, right? So some fonts might not be installed on a user's computer. There might be some fonts that you want the user to download. If they are not able to access the fonts that you specify, you want to have some fallback to some generic font, which is going to be on every computer that they can use. So I'm going to show you how to do all that and what all that means. But here you could say the see that the values that you could set for the font family property, the values are the family name, like the specific <laughs> family name, and then also the generic name, like serif or sans serif. And then I want you to read this description, right? So, but I'm going to show you some stuff and then we'll come back to it and then you'll read it. All right, so let's take a look. I have here in 025 formatting text, font family. And uh, let's open up this first folder and index and main CSS split vertically. And you can see I have an H1 and a paragraph. The paragraph's just a reminder about serif versus sans serif. I'm going to come over here to the H1 and type in font family, family. And, uh, and then right here, I have some different options. And so the first thing I could do is I could just use a generic font. And so I'm going to use a generic serif font you need to include at least one generic font. If I try to include something specific, right, and no generic font, uh, WebStorm's gonna say font property, font family does not have a generic default value. And over here in MDN's documentation, which this is the description from MDN, web authors should always add at least one generic family in font family list. So if I could get rid of this error by adding in like sans serif, there we go. But I'm going to start out and I'm just going to do a serif font because that's at the most basic level what I need. So there's a serif font and I'm going to preview this, but I want to ask you a question and then I want you to pause the video and answer it. With a serif font, are the feet going to be there or not there? So pause the video and answer that. With a serif font, will the feet be there or not be there? <laughs> So with the serif font, the feet are going to be there. And sans serif, sans is without, they're not going to have the feet. So we're going to see the feet here, and there are the feet. So if I make this uh, you know, a little bit larger, font size, uh, 128 pixels, right? you can see those feet right there. There are those feet. And so that's a, a serif font. I just want to leave that one by itself because I want to include, hey, here's the basic serif. And, uh, and then I'm going to do one here, sans serif, and the second one. So we'll just make this one sans serif and uh, take that out. Because at the most basic level, that's all you need. Font uh, size is going to be 128 pixels. There we go. And then preview this one. All right, so here's sans serif, no feet. Here's serif with feet. And you could kind of like just take a second to like compare what kind of emotional impact? Because when you get into design, it's all about how does it make you feel? <laughs> how does it make you feel? What kind of emotional impact, right, does this have versus this? And then also readability, usability. That's also a big part of design. Not only how do you feel, but what's the usability of it? All right, so that's the, the basic settings. You could just do font family, right, either serif or sans serif. You'll notice there are a few other values there that we can set, serif, sans serif, monospace, cursive, fantasy. I'll let you play with those on your own. So I encourage you to pause the video and just type those in and see what happens. And, uh, and then the last thing I want to show is how you could set multiple values, right? So font family lets you specify a prioritized list of font family names and or generic family names. Right, so font family name is a specific font family, or a generic family name just means, hey, give me a serif or a sans serif font. I don't care what it is, whatever the browser, whatever that computer has on it, for the selected element. So you set a prioritized list of the fonts you want to try. It'll try the first ones first, and then it'll try the next one and the next one, and then finally the last one that you want is going to be like, you know, sans serif, something really generic, just like, hey, give me whatever you've got on your machine, which is a sans serif font. 
So the browser will select the first font on the list installed on the computer or that can be downloaded. Values are separated by common to indicate their alternatives. You should always add at least one generic font family in the font family list since there's no guarantees that specific font families installed on the computer can be downloaded. The generic family lets the browser select an acceptable fallback font when needed. So this is a big buzzword when web programming, having a fallback, you need to know that term, meaning, hey, if my specific setting doesn't work, I'm falling back to this generic one and it'll still work. It is often convenient to use a shorthand property font to set font size and other font related properties all at once. Font size, font family, that should be font family, whatever. All right, so let's just look at the last one and we're going to have a couple of settings in this one. And uh, I'm going to split vertically. And uh, first thing I'm going to do is just move this over so we could read all that in one line. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So uh, here, font family, Helvetica, new, whatever, Helvetica, Arial, sans serif. So these are all sans serif fonts. This is on like pretty much everybody's machine. Everybody's machine will be able to find that. Maybe this one is not on everybody's machine. Maybe probably this one is. So you could just set them in order and you could just, you know, play with it and you could see what they look like. And you could, I'm going to show you how to find specific fonts you want coming up soon. So that's one example. I'm just going to duplicate that and then comment out the first one. And uh, what I want to show you is if I went with a uh, Bitstream, this is the font I installed on this machine, super specific, right? because I wanted to have that font for my web, for my editor, my IDE, my editing environment. And so chances are the vast majority of people in the world do not have this font on their computer. So if I say, hey, use this font, that's going to fail on most people's computers. I know this is a sans serif font, so as the fallback, I'm just going to put sans serif. So on my computer, when I render this, it'll go get that font, and that is Bitstream Vera Sans Mono. Right, that is it right there. But if, uh, and you know, it's interesting, that's called sans, right? Because when we look at that, there are no feet. <laughs> sans mono, I'm not seeing feet. Like there's a little foot right there, kind of, if you want to think of that, and that's a little bit of a foot, but the R doesn't have a foot, the N doesn't. So just kind of an interesting deal. And, uh, and then sans serif to me is what is closest to that. So if I took this out, this is what it's going to look like on most people's machine. Let me just zoom in. All right, so take a snapshot of that in your head, what that looks like, and then this is what it'll look like on most people's machine. All right, so that's uh, that's what it'll look like. I'm going to leave that in so you can just play with each of those in this folder. All right, so that's how you set font family. That's fallback. That's putting in a list of prioritized fonts separated by commas with you know a generic font at the end. We're going to see eventually how to use Google Fonts down here in video number 11. But before we learn Google Fonts, I wanted to look at all of the different 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, but not this one. All of the different CSS properties which make up the font shorthand properties. So I want to look at all those first and then a few other ones and then we'll get to Google Fonts. But that is font family, the CSS font family property. And uh, I think you got it. Work with the examples. It'll help some in it. And in the next video, we're going to look at font size and font weight uh, and maybe font variant. Probably just font size and font weight all at once.